the new film from director George Clooney, written by Mark L. Smith from the non-fiction book by Daniel James Brown, which had previously inspired a PBS documentary, American Experience, The Boys of 36, which I, I haven't seen. So this is the true story of the University of Washington eight-man boat crew that set out to represent America in the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin to compete to do that. So Callum Turner, who was in the Fantastic Beasts movies, and he was also in Emma Full Stop, is Joe Rance. We meet Joe living in an old broken down car among a community of um, of hobos is the word that would be used. In fact, at one point, it, that kind of that provokes almost a fight when somebody says that word. He's studying engineering, but he needs money and lodging and lodgings, and he doesn't have either. He finds out that you can get money and lodgings if you make the rowing team. So he tries out for the rowing team despite having never rowed before. He gets along with the guy who makes the boats. He impresses the coach, played by Joel Edgerton, who has a Joel Edgerton has an old fashioned face. And I mean that as a compliment. In period dramas, Joel Edgerton is, there's something about his face that, that lends itself to a former age. He makes the I'm team. I'm intrigued by the idea of an old fashioned face. You know, I know. I, and I find it hard to explain exactly what I mean by that. Maybe you just know it when you see it. Yes. Write in and tell me whether you think Joel Edgerton has an old fashioned face. Anyway, so he makes the team. But he has issues. At one point, somebody calls him Hobo Joe, and he gets into a fight with them. And those issues get into his head, and they get in the way of his rowing, and they get him thrown off the boat, and he wants back on the boat. Here's a clip. What can I do for you, Joe? On my seat back. Why? All that time I spent in it, the work we all did together, that boat, That's all I got. The boys. That's all I got. I can't lose that. And so he gets the seat back because it's all he got. And I don't know whether you thought the same thing as I did, but I could just hear Zach Mayo going, I got nowhere else to go. I got nowhere else to go. That moment in, in An Officer and a Gentleman. Oh, which, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In which he's, you know, and that's when Lou Gossett Jr. goes, okay. You can, get back, you can get back in the boat, you can get back on the training program. Now, I didn't know this story beforehand because I, what I know about sport, again, postage stamp, I can see why it would appeal to George Clooney. This is one of those serious mid-budget films that David Putnam stopped making movies because he said you couldn't make any more. And then in that lovely speech that he gave at the BAFTAs when uh, Clooney was doing Good Night and Good Luck, said... George Clooney is now making the kind of movies that I thought you couldn't make anymore. You know, they're not huge, big spectacle movies. They're not tiny little indie movies. They're intelligent, mid-range movies with something to say. There is a lot of stuff about the hard scrabble uh, Washington boys competing against teams who have money, who have privilege, who have unfair advantages. It is absolutely a let's root for the underdog against the overlords tale. When it moves to Berlin and the Olympics, we have these kind of glimpses of an, an almost comedically angry Hitler. You know, <laughs> it is one of those things, whenever you do any portrayal of, of Hitler on screen, it's, you know, particularly if you're doing the Berlin Games and him being cross about Germany not winning absolutely everything. In fact, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a character when, they, when they're walking through the thing and he turns to him and he goes, oh, Jesse Owens. You're, you must be Jesse Owens. He goes, yeah, I am Jesse Owens. He goes, you're going to get out there and you know show all those Germans. And Jesse Owens says, no, I'm going to get out there and show the people back home, which is kind of a you know, kind mm -hmm. of little, nice. okay, fine, no, nicely done. Um, the races are done really well. I don't know anything about rowing other than it looks like incredibly hard work and very, very, I mean, you know, it's, it, and you get the sense during the races, which are shot really well, incidentally, you get the sh the sense that this is dragging this boat through this water, and okay, fine, I know the thing is designed, so it's a. I kept thinking of that phrase, you know, skipping over the ocean like a stone. These boats don't look like they're skipping over anything like a stone. They look like the, you know, people. And I didn't know the for those story. not watching, Mark is acting out, acting the out the rowing in, in a buff way that would make Robbie Collin feel embarrassed. Um, anyway, the the thing is, it it's always that thing. But if if a drama can make you. Uh, Invest in it. 
Yes, but invest in a sport that you don't know anything about, then it's doing its job. And although I didn't know the story, but I kind of knew that, you know, it goes to the Olympics. And I kind of thought you probably wouldn't be telling this story if there weren't some moments of triumph, you know, over adversity. But I don't know how it plays out. And I found myself during the racing sequences going, go on, come on, come on, just, are there two boats behind? Come on, you know. And partly that's because Alexander Desplat's score is doing everything it can to wring every moment of emotion and tension uh, out of the thing. Um, but it's, you know, it tells its story well. I mean, there are, there are very few surprises. It is, I suppose, rather like the boat itself. It's solidly made. Um, I remember a filmmaker once said to me that a chair was like, a, you know, like a piece of... Uh, piece of good furniture you can sit on it you know and this, this is what this is like it's like a piece of good furniture you can sit on it it's a it's a solid story perhaps unsurprisingly told but solidly told and it did have me going come on you know <laughs> you can do it you can do it is the hitler portrayed in this movie the kind of guy who would say why don't they make movies like gone with the wind anymore <laughs> Because kind of because what kind of gorilla would say something as stupid as that? Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.